Today, we're looking at an orange ink by Jehirban, Orange Indian. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. Down below, there's timestamps so that if there's only certain things you're interested, you can skip around to it. But if you've got the time, I would appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you like fountain pen ink reviews and are new here, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this Sailor My First Pen with a medium fine nib. I wrote with it for a day and I used it to take the notes for this video. In order to have a standardization in my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Although I do use more papers and those will show up later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I originally picked this up in sample form and in writing with it, before I even got to do my writing samples and anything, I used it up. So that meant I went and got it in a bottle form and it comes in a bottle like this and a lot of people like to complain about it, but I like them. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen. There is peppering of darker letters. It's not like it's an amazing shading ink, it's just a great color. Six seconds to dry. Medium is just a little bit darker than the extra fine, not quite as dark as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, again, a light peppering of some darker letters there. Nine seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show a little bit of color variation, medium shows more. It does show itself a little bit in that peppering in the writing. Tomoy River, with no bleeding, a very minor ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo, yes, it has halo. Sheen, no. Shade, yes. So when it shades a little bit darker, we get the halo. Like, look at the Urban. On the HE, we see some halo, it's darker, but into the R, while it's getting lighter, we still have halo, because it's a darker tone. But when you come down and you look at it on the orange, the N, the A to the N, there's not so much halo, but it's much lighter. So it's definitely there. Both the halo and the shading, they come together. The extra fine is lighter than the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 12 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both, show no color variation. We're not getting it here in the writing. And Rhodia. With no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is a little lighter than the stub, just a little bit lighter. With no feather spread, halo sheen, a very light peppering of some shading. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. 11 seconds to dry. I said no shade. I'm seeing little pepperings, looking at the word quick, it starts a little darker, gets a little lighter, gets a little darker again. Fox starts a little lighter, gets a little dark. It's There's a little bit there. Again, it's a very light peppering of it. The scrubby for both show some color variation left to right, and we do get it in the writing. I agree with Vita that there's a lot to be learned by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And what we see here is two different shades. We see the orange at the very top, but at the very bottom, we're seeing a very peachy color. And that's what's allowing it its little bit of shade. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And you really see that peach gathered at the bottom, forming a line and trying to be a little bit resistant. You also see some water separation begin between the peach and the orange, which shows if it is resistant, that orange is still gonna push away from the water. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the spear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I wouldn't use this in a note-taking situation if I wanted to go back and highlight because the lowercase h, blown out. The I, blown out. It's just not worth losing important ideas. 
Now, water is lifting all the darkest tones, but that little peachy color that was at the bottom, it's still there and on the paper. Pen flush does everything that water does and a bit more. We start seeing a lot of the white of the paper coming through. So pen flush is all that you should need at most to get it out of your pen, although all I needed was water. The one third bleach solution, which you would not need, completely removes it from the paper. I test viscosity or flow by using a tilt test that I've linked in this video. For the inks I've tested, I have found a average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Jehirban's Orange Indian has a viscosity of 1.76, making this a wet ink. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. I find this by using my writing samples that were done on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. Jehirban's Orange Indian has an average dry time of 10 seconds, making it a fast drying ink. Instead of finding inks that look like Jehirban's Orange Indian, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice turquoise here, and I chose Birmingham Pen Company's Point Park Fountain Turquoise. The second writing sample is done on Yellow Rhodia, P. Berger, and White Lines paper. I'm in no way interested in seeing a performance change for putting this onto Yellow Rhodia. What I was really curious is what happens to some of the tone or even the shading. Now, when we look at this, the tone is unchanged, but the shading gets completely washed away. It disappears with yellow paper. Not that this matters for those working in that professional environment. It might matter to you if you choose to write on yellow paper. This is P. Berger. It's a French ruled student grade paper. We do get some bleeding. We do get some ghosting. This did not touch the page underneath from the stub. The extra fine did have spots went very deep. I think the extra fine and the medium, it would be up to you, but you could use the back of the page. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade. That smeary bit was me. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, one second to dry. Medium is a little bit lighter than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, two seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show no, well, medium shows some color variation. Extra fine shows none, but we really didn't get any in the writing. And last up is white lines paper, which, there we go. As you say, I have a note about a little bit of bleed and a little bit of ghost. It's not bleeding all the way through. It's getting deep. You see any extra fine? It's not as much on camera. It's not something that would stop you from using the back of the page, but you do see it on the back of the page. There is a slight bit of ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. Extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and three seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, five seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show a little bit of color variation, just slightly far left to far right, although we don't get it in the writing. It's a more absorbent paper. And that is all that I have for writing samples. So what do I think of Jehirban's Orange Indian? While it can shade, I don't find that this orange looks its best when shading. I find it looks its best while it's darker and a very solid tone. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? I would prefer it from a very wet, any nib pen. It looks great all the time. Now, if you use it in a dry pen, the tone that goes down is still very readable. If you've made it this far and you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm gonna remind you to subscribe. Thanks for watching.